force is the measure of electrical force which seems that seems to push the current it is a force which is going to push the current right the current what is the current current is the magnitude how many electrons are there this is our current right and when we say ohm ohm is the unit of resistance that how much is the opposite force when the electrons they want to move how much is the opposite force is called a resistance right then we need to know what is gfci gfci is also called the ground fault circuit interrupter ground fault circuit interrupter is just like a plug just just like a plug which is being uh, you know where the insulation is which is insulated with a circuit breaker and it acts whenever there is a ground disturbance from the incoming and outgoing grounding right a gfci ground fault occurs when there is a break in the low resistance grounding path from a tool or electrical system the electrical current may then take an alternate path to ground the user so this gfci is not going to protect you always remember this is not a device or circuit which is going to protect you rather it is going to protect the people it is going uh, it is going to protect the device and that's why in in companies and in home we are using this gfci because whenever there is a uh, change in the grounding path so it is going to ignite and it is going to initiate it and it, it is initiated very fast within 1 by 40 of second i mean if you will make 40 times of 1 second it is going to be and it makes a disconnection between the grounding otherwise if there is no disconnection then it might be possible that this will go into your body and you will get the electrical shock as well or it will go to the device where you can get the electrical shock because you are using this device fundamentals of electricity you can see it's, it's electricity is just like a water uh, a water hose in our garden for example we we have how much is the water involved we call it flow rate or current magnitude right what is the pressure of water we consider it as uh, voltage how much is the pressure how much they are going towards the uh, you know final destination and resistance the more resistance the larger the the dia which means the less resistance is there so this is one of the example just to understand you that how electricity electricity works or how electricity is going to flow electricity has many hazards we are going to discuss three hazards in detail one of them is electrical shock and then we will have electrical burn and then there will be a uh, electrical uh, uh, what uh, we will show you so electricity travels in closed circuit normally through a conductor our body is also a very good conductor of electricity metals are a very good conductor of electricity shock results when the body come become the part of electric circuit if there is electricity and our body is going to become the part of this electricity so the electron will come into our body it might be possible that electron will come from one end and it will go out from another end right it might be possible that the electron will come from one end and it will be go out from yes. another end so we but we don't know what the path they are going to take right yes we don't know what path yes. they are going to take just just a minute i will just turn on my air conditioner okay guys so can you see the slide yes yes okay, okay. so we don't know what electricity uh, the path which is going to be taken by the electricity so going on here voltage there are certain factors on which electricity depends 
for example voltage the higher the voltage the greater the current because this is the force the higher the voltage the greater the current duration i can't see uh, sorry we can't see we can't see the screen uh -huh. aha just a minute just a minute yes. When I ask you, can you see my screen? You told me yes. You can see. Now? Now yeah, yeah. it's good. It's good. Yeah. Okay. Why you see the YouTube? Focus on here, not on YouTube. Okay. so duration of the time how much time you are going to expose with the electricity and the current path current path is also very necessary current will go wherever it will find the more conductor wherever it will find the low resistance the current will go there for example in our body for example if you are wearing the chain the metals the current is usually it goes towards metals for example this buckle for example these it might be possible that from here the current will go out if current is going from here inside your body may be possible it will go out from here it might be possible that it will affect your body and it will go out from here it might be possible that it can go out here because our bones are not a good conductor of electricity they are the resistance so wherever electricity will find the resistance it will go towards the area where there is a good conductor available for example that's why the electricity it goes into the earth because earth is a good conductor and that's why we put the uh, copper rod in the earth because copper is a very good conductor so whenever there is a problem or whenever yes. there is a leakage of electricity the copper will attract the electricity and it will take to the electricity onto the ground right then we have the frequency for example if ac current which means more disaster resistance skin condition clothing context of its area and environmental factors these are all the possibilities which are going to affect on the severity of electrical current uh, as i told you we don't know which of the path electricity is going to take but this is uh, the study says the more uh, you are fatty the more you have fatty acids in you the more you are fat which means that you will have more effect rather than those people who are slim smart like you they can have less effect of electrical current because bones are a very good resistor okay how much the current is going to affect you now we can see that 0.001 only perception level have you seen the battery which is in your watch if you just make it tongue you will enjoy right you will feel something this is perception level which you are going to enjoy only and but it it shows that still your battery has life right from this this uh, from this activity if we are going to make it on our tongue we will we feel something which is a sign that at least there the battery is working but at the same time if we are going to have 0.005 right 0.005 then in in this case slight shock right slight shock not painful but disturbing remember the example of sometimes your hands are wet and you are going to touch the button what happened then right what happened static there is a mild shock this is a very minor shock if the this grounding is not properly done you will feel shock right but not much it's not a serious thing yes. but you feel right you and then next time you take care for this yes right then we have yes, yes musa anything you want to add no no uh, no uh, nothing okay good then 0.006 to 0.025 painful shock muscular control is lost because women they have more mass than men so they feel is even a small amount of current too much then 0.009 to 0.03 this is called freezing current or let go range where you are going to have electrical shock maybe you will go two steps behind you will get the shock or you will go two more steps depending on your resistance in your body 0.05 to 0.15 extreme pain respiratory arrest muscular contractor 
contractions then 1 to 4.3 ventricular uh, fibrillation it might be possible that your veins will start having pressure right and they are going to maybe they are going to burst and 10 is the cardiac cardiac arrest you will get maybe heart attack you will get uh, nervous breakdown due to these things and burn uh, i think it's it 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 is a common study that if you have uh, 30% or 33% of your body is going to burn there is very li- less chance for you to survive uh, can you please confirm miss uh, doctor mad if yes if you have idea that how much body if it is going to burn then there is very less chance for the survival what was the question mr aras how much chance is there if if the body of a human is going to burn how much percentage then the survival chances are very less aha uh-huh. it's it's uh, there is a yani variation between the study uh but uh, once it's above 25 percentage yani uh, it's cause more risk yeah i heard the same because i used to go in uh, in a hospital which was a burn center basically yes so very you only treat the burning cases and wallahi you will realize what is your life and how it could be this burning is is very i, I worked maybe for a two month uh, i covered in bern unit as uh, sophisticated and uh, as as you mentioned and you need to actually to calculate how how much fluid you need to replace and sometimes exactly. uh, also there is first degree burn second degree burn third degree burn the more depth you will go that the risk will be affecting more right so now you can see the burn see burn so one of the hazard of electricity is the burn electrical burn electrical burn most of the time why it is going to be happen whenever you are owing, having overloading for example you have one socket for 220 and you are using it for air conditioning purpose you are using for washing machine you are using for grinder chopper blender ironing and sometimes we are using multi sockets one mobile phone uh, one socket five mobile phones are going to be charged so what will happen if your car has the capacity of five people and you are taking 15 people on this car what will happen right so the same thing is going to have the problem with electricity that they have the limited right they have limited uh, capabilities so we need to avoid such kind of activity we have seen most of the electrical uh, burn cases are uh, due to the if the uh, equipment itself is improper or the wiring is going to be damaged and sometimes we have also seen that due to this burn problems there are fires for example have you seen in hotels when you have the fully carpet and the curtains available you don't find any wire there but most of the time the wire, wires are you know underneath the carpets or or behind the curtains so if they are going to have overheated the fuel which is the cloth of carpet or the you know curtain it is in contact with this and there is a possibility that there will be ignition of fire is also possible so one of the hazard about electricity is a burn then we have third one is the internal injury right first one is the electrical shock number two is the electrical burns and third one is the electrical internal injuries it might be possible that you will get electrical shock but nothing is going to be happen at the same time so the doctors they used to say that whenever you have electrical shock just wait for 30 minutes 40 minutes because the internal injury symptoms are going to be appear after some time not directly right for example after some time you will feel sweating after some time you will feel uh, shivering after some time you will get you know drowsiness so this is highly recommended that whenever you have the internal injuries due to electrical shock or even if you don't see the internal injuries due to electrical shock you must take the victim to the hospital right for the check up it might be possible that there are some internal injuries which are not appearing just after the after some time so that's why we need to take the them to the hospital so we can uh, make the inspection that what is the level of their internal injuries and then we can take the actions clear 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 
now gfci what is gfci ground fault circuit interrupter ground fault circuit interrupter is works by comparing the amount of current going to and returning see going to and returning from here it is going inside and from here it is returning outside if there is a difference between this thing, this amount of current and this amount of current this ground shock is going to be activated and it will break the contact between this electrical device and to this you can see that there is a difference between 1.95 and 2 there is a difference of 0 0.05 so which means that there is a now the difference between incoming and outgoing so it will initiate itself and it is going to make a disconnection between this electrical socket uh, electrical electricity and your equipment have you seen this kind of gfci in your companies sometime you will also find them in hotels yes, yeah, this is we a, use this one uh, in american uh, standard space. very good yes also in confined yes but this uh, type of plug it's american standard so yes. we not see it here a lot yani maybe in uh, al jubail and uh, al dhahran dammam we see this but here in jidda no yes, yes where where aramco they used to stay there american people they you will find them but not here all the time sometimes you will find them yes but khalas if it is american haram ma fi mushkil no need to use as i mean kufr khalas saso has uh, made the yeah. standard actually so exactly they have uh... for the for the products we need to follow our saso standards and saso by the way by the way most of the time saso is following the american standard Correct. If it is in Arabic, ma fi mushkil it is halal. But if it is in English, lazim mushkil. Okay. So grounding. How do we need to avoid the grounding? The precautions what we need to take is to ground all power supply, electrical circuits, and electrical equipment. Do not remove the ground pins, prongs from the cord and plug connected equipment or extension cords. Use double insulated tools. For example, most of the time we have seen that in the maintenance workshops during the construction activities they are using the double insulated tools to avoid any kind of current leakages ground all exposed metallic parts of equipment now avoid contact with power lines for example locate power lines in your area before beginning of work prior to digging call to have utilities identify and mark any buried lines here in the kingdom we have seen a very good practice by saudi kaharba that when all the because all the utility lines electrical lines are uh, you know under the ground so they are buried lines they are having buried lines so what they have done that they used to have uh, what do you call it uh, whenever they are going to have the electrical cable right above the one feet of the this tag. electrical cable they are having a red and white tape Tip, yeah, yeah. If someone is going to make digging or by means of crane, they are going to make excavation. So before one fit, when you are going to take out the sand, you will find that this is tape is available, which means that this khatar, there is a electrical cable. So you should avoid this area, right? Which is a right. very good practice. In Pakistan, we don't have underground all from above. So sometimes birds, crows, they are going to die when they touch it. Sometimes people, if they want to make suicide, they go on this top. So yes. These kind of activities are common in Pakistan, India. If uncertain, you you don't know how much is the power of of these electrical lines, then keep yourself and objects at least 20 feet away from all uninsulated energized power lines. And if if you know between it is 50 and 350 kVA, then make it 10 feet. And if more than 350 kV, then make it distance of 50 feet. So in simple, if you don't know what is the capacity, then keep it 20 feet away from all uninsulated power. If it is between 50 and 350 kV, then keep it 10 feet away. And if it is more than 350, then 50. Why we are going to keep this distance? Why? Because any contact with any object it can produce uh, can produce ex 
flame or because anything. Maybe there because will be our spot. body, our body attracts the electricity. Yes, and one or other reasons. Though. See, when we have the electrical cables, there is also electromagnetic field in the surrounding. EMF, yes. Right. So the more power of electrical cable, the field is going to be more. Even if you are not going to touch, but if you go closer, you will get attracted by this electrical field and you will feel the electrical shock very bad. And this is one of the phenomena why we have the arc flash accidents are happening. Right? Emergency action. What we need to do in case of electrical shock? Don't touch the casualty. Why you don't no need to touch casualty? He is your brother. You must touch him. But this is no, no need to touch. Why? Body body is a good conductor. Yes, the yeah. electricity will transfer from his body to your body. Same like COVID-19, right? Call yeah. for help. Isolate from the power supply. Call for the ambulance. Check the breathing. If it is still breathing or the, there is a difficulty in breathing, then start. Uh, your CPR, if you don't know how to make CPR, then contact Dr. Maud. He will make the first aid training for you. And then you will come to know that what is the exact way to make the CPR. Treat the burns. Treat for physical shock. Ensure medical help is obtained. These all things you will be doing very fast. Before yes. starting of CPR, first you need to call the ambulance. Don't forget to call the ambulance or emergency services. Otherwise, they will not come. So... Always follow the same sequence. And if you don't know anything, then please just call the ambulance or the medical services and no need to do anything. You will put that victim into more trouble. These are some of the numbers in Jeddah, Makkah uh, province. We have now 911 for all. Once you are going to dial 911, then they will ask you, you need uh, police service, you need civil defense service, you need any other service. So, but in some other cities, still the numbers are different. So if you want to learn, you can learn. Otherwise, 9-11. I hope in all over the kingdom, it will be 9-11 very soon. What we are going to check, there are some checks which we can use, do by ourselves. For example, even if we are not competent for electrical safety, but we can do physically by means of just physical inspection. Check the to cable sheet, damage to plug, flex fully insulated, inadequate joints, unsecured sheet, wet or contaminated damage to casing or burns or scotch marks. User check plus, who will do this user check plus? It will be done by a competent person, right? For example, qualified electrician, electrical engineer, or having experience of electricity. How they are going to check? They are going to check like this. They will open it. We will do like this, and they will do like this. Remove the plug cover and check the fuse, check the cord grip. This is the cord grip. Right, check the terminals are secure. These terminals are secure and no signals for internal damage, and it will be done by a competent person. What is the minimum distance should be maintained between a scaffold and energized power line? 20 feet. Yes, guys. D. 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 Very right. 20 Very feet. What is GFCI? Ground, ground fault ground circuit, circuit interrupter. Very good. Excellent. Ground fault circuit in interrupters are used to measure the capacity of electrical shock in case of short circuit. True or false? False. Why false? False. It is to measure the... Excuse me, Mr. Ramesh. Yes. It's uh, the internet. Uh, the internet connection uh, is cut now. I don't know where stop or what we. Okay, Mushkil, you now. you didn't waste much. No problem. No problem. We are here now. Okay. You can see from okay. the video, Mafi Mushkil. Yes. Hey. Why? GFCI because are used to measure the capacity. Why it is false? Because if there's uh, the current goes low, it just cuts off. Yes, it is not a measuring device like M meter, volt meter, right? Yes. Or multimeter. It is only a fuse, electrical circuit. Alas, it, yes. its job is to make the disconnection between the electricity and the equipment. Right? Any right. question? Yes. Mm -hmm. no. um, I have a question. Yes, please. In Saudi Arabia, uh, these JFCIs, I believe they are in UK and in Saudi Arabia, I haven't seen any example of these. 
GFCIs. Are they fuse only? Fuse, we can say? The problem is, no, it's not the fuse. The problem, I also asked the same question with my friend who is uh, electrical engineer in Saudi Kaharba, that why don't we have this? Uh, even if you see in your air conditioner, there are yeah. three cables. But when you ask the electrician to install the uh, this special type of air conditioner plug, he will cut yes. the neutral wire and he will make two only, like the normal, right? Yes. The reason yes. is that they say that electrical, uh, this Saudi Kaharba, they are going to ground the electric electricity from the main bus bar, which is for your building, right? So then no need uh, for every socket to be done. Sometimes if you... No, don't... no. Uh, Sorry. Excuse me, Mr. Anas, because I'm electrical engineer. Ah, so I but, want to add something. Yes, please, please. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I suppose we ground every plug in the house, and sometimes we plug the, uh, yani not the socket, also the, yani turn off light. This uh, socket, uh, some uh, companies like Panasonic, they ground the uh, the same plug, yani, and we must uh, put in each plug, yani. Sorry, I didn't get your point. If you are going to ground everything, then no, what no. will happen? No, no, Yani, it's uh, uh, we we must ground every point in the room or in the house, and also the panels, and also the building, and also if we have Yani, uh, Yani, uh, the electrical company, the uh, electrical electricity company in Saudi Arabia, they ground uh, their material, and also we ground the home and every point in the home. This is important, yeah. Yani. This is important, but this practice is not common. Yeah. This is what we yeah, are saying that this is this no, must but, be done, right? But yeah. this is not a yes. common practice. Yes. Yes, but and you see all the electrical equipment now here in shop. You find it they use not uh, two line, yani uh, plug uh, three. Yes, yes, so plug is three line, no doubt. But what about yes. the one which is inside? Right? This is what I'm mm -hmm. saying. When you are going to make the cable, right? They make mm -hmm. two. And the third one, which is neutral, they cut it. Class. No need for it. Anyway, it's, 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 it's a possible, but yeah. it, it varies from electrician to electrician. Let's yes. have a video. Fast, fast. Can you see the screen? No. If I don't share, then how can you see? <laughs> nice one. Now? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> 
It's okay. It's okay. It's a, long can, video. Uh, it's a good example, actually. That's funny. Yes, you can go to napbofilm.net or on YouTube. They have the channel available. So mm -hmm. there you will find almost all on safety topic. You will find their videos. It's what very is good. it? Napo, N A P O, Napo Film. Napo Aflam. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. We will have more videos in our upcoming session, uh, upcoming module. So don't worry about it. No problem. Okay. So now we will move to our next topic, which is your favorite thing. We call it PPE. PPE. See now those people <laughs> who know that their best choice is PPE. Yes, in uh, Mr. Anas, in this uh, uh, any topic, uh, suppose for each company provide caterpillar. Now, as the companies, they are not providing the salaries. Specific, you are company. saying that they should provide yeah. caterpillar. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> If you speak in front of them, they will be saying. Okay. Especially in Bin Laden. Yes, especially Bin Laden. I don't know, maybe my, one of my friend, Mazin. Mazin is in, on Bin Laden. He's HSC manager there in Makkah. But I don't know which, which of the project you are there. So anyway. I'm in Haram, in Haram project. He, but he is not in, on uh, Haram. It's another project. Yes. Anyway, protecting employees from workplace hazards. PPE is our 1910 132 section. Employer must protect the workers from any of the hazards. See, even the chapter is PPE, but OSHA is insisting you again, please don't focus on PPE. You should focus on other types of controls when other types of controls are not possible or after applying other controls, for example, elimination, substitution, engineering, administrative controls, then go for PPE, right? PPE is not going to eliminate the hazard. PPE is just a defense, right? And it might be possible that you have a good defense and it might be possible that your defense is not good. So don't take the chance with PPE. Don't think that since I'm wearing helmet, so I'm safe or I can 
put my hand head anywhere if you are wearing the safety shoes don't think that you can put the legs in <laughs> everywhere always we should avoid to putting our legs any other places so ppe is the last line of control right after ppe there is injury or accident there is no such control so our last line is ppe example of ppe is we can see there are many examples of ppe is which includes face shield head feet hands and arms bodies hearing for example ear plugs ear muff etc there are many kind of ppes which we are using nowadays especially mask right establishing ppe program what is ppe program osha standard require you that before using the ppe you need to establish the ppe program your ppe program should be documented and it is going to give you the idea that what are the area where you are going to use the ppe what kind of ppe are you going to use uh, from where the requirement of ppe comes from where the PPE, who will tell you that you need to use ppe yes safety officers okay yes atif abdul jabbar who will tell you use ppe safety manager you have to decide you are and you must have to use ppe there is nobody to going to tell you you have you are using ppe or not any other afaq shazeb your question is who is responsible for enforcing ppe or this one this is how do you know what kind of ppe we need how do we know how do we know that we need to use the ppe Uh, by signature uh, the element by of... identifying the hazards by identifying the hazards and by any other yes by using the bbi in program itself the program will decide who will uh, use who will not use according employers to the, according to the activity is doing right right see our risk assessment is going to tell us then that when we are going to use the ppe it will not be coming from the safety manager choice it will not be coming from the safety engineer choice it will not be coming from your own choice who are you to decide you are not the expert of safety right it might be possible that you need to have a class helmet you are using b class helmet because this is i think i should use it's not your thing we need to follow a standard right our risk assessment is going to teach us that which ppe do we need to wear right because in risk assessment remember we applied control elimination substitution from yes. where we get the idea this is the hazard this is the risk in this hazard and how to control this risk we are going to use the we can we are going to apply different controls and one of these control is the ppe so always when you are doing the safety audit or when you are going to the safety inspection ask them why they are using the ppe who told them from where they come to know that they have to use the ppe many times the companies they are using ppe is useless without any information they don't have any concrete answer they said that the, uh, since our manager told that we should be wearing helmet so we are wearing helmet even I mean, there is no need to wear helmet at this location but i don't know why they they are wearing helmet but just to show off the people that we are very much conscious about safety otherwise there is no chance for getting you know fall anything from the height so sometimes you will find these kind of jokes in the companies that they are doing the activities but they don't know from where this comes because they say that since since long time we are following this activity so that's why we are continuing so to use the pp you need to have the risk assessment or risk assessment is going to tell us that when we are going to use the pp and what ppp we are going to use once we are going to establish the pp program we need to know that what are the activities which require ppe then we need to know that uh, what are the different type of pp which we are going to use in this area how many persons we have and how much the quantity we need to use on per day consumption or per week consumption if you are going to purchase the ppes on weekly basis or monthly basis you need to identify that what are the areas where you are going to use the ppes and how much is the quantity because ppe if it is not available you might be stop the work right 
for example if the welder does not have welder sheet shield then what will happen can you do the welding no we need to have welding sheet available then only he can do the welding some jobs are very critical nowadays if you are not going to use ppe mask then what will happen 1000 real by relation 1000 real see everyone remember 1000 real Oh, nobody remember it is due because, to the corona <laughs> why because no, no, because this way is effective this is effective this, is, this way uh, mr Anas. exactly i agree this is this is human psyche that if you are going to make awareness 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 only the things are not going to be suitable you need because to because money is more worth it than make life fitness we also discussed it yesterday remember when we were discussing about safety management mm. Mm. we discussed in it mm. so after establishing in the ppe program we can see that we need to provide the ppe training to our people sometimes we have seen that the people are using the ppe but in a very incorrect way which means that to wear the ppe or don't wear the ppe the people who are working on a scaffold or height they are using the the safety harness just to show the safety officer but they don't make it buckle up lock they are using the safety harness in an incorrect manner they most of the people sometimes they don't know how to use a safety harness or how to wear the safety harness but they are wearing because they know that if safety officer will come he will make the violation so that's why they are wearing most of the time the people are wearing the mask but in actual they are not wearing the mask the mask is under their nose or mask is under their mouth so they are using the mask just to show the the baldia people or the police that we are wearing so ppe training is very necessary if we are not going to train our people on correct type of ppe and how to use the ppe the the use of ppe will be limited you will not get the all benefits of the ppe also how to maintain the ppe how to discard the ppe is also very necessary because to maintain them sometimes you are using the gas mask filter mask they have limited time safety harness they have limited time you need to make inspection third party inspection after every 6 month so we need to maintain the ppe we need to maintain the uh, we need to check and inspect our ppes time to time if they are being used for most of the uh, the time and always remember ppe is very personal don't give your ppe to any other person maybe he has allergy maybe you have allergy so this is continuous uh, contagious diseases are going to be spread right so always keep your ppe with you safety spectacles we know that these safety spectacles are being used for whenever we have there is a splash of chemical we use we use the uh, sorry when we have the the chips or the particles uh, coming out from lathe machine or carpentry activities we are going to use the safety spectacles in case of chemicals or splashes or dust we are going to use the goggles which are also closed from the side so there is no chance for any uh, vapor or chemical to grow inside our eyes for the welding purpose we are going to use welding welding shields then hard hat are very necessary when you are working on construction side or whenever there is a there is a chance that anything from the height is going to fall on you because our head is very strong but at the same time it is one of the most critical area if something is going to happen on head or with the brain then it is very less chance that you are going to survive classes of hard heads this is not in your book so if you want to take picture you can take the picture this is the recent classification of hard heads before it was a b c now it is g g is called g for general so g class is the general uh, class of hard head which is used for mining building construction ship building lumbering and manufacturing activities they can bear the volt of it to 2200 then we have class e e for electrical so which can bear the the voltage of 20000 so whenever we are going to perform the electrical activity or those people who are involved in electrical inspection or electrician or electrical engineer when they are dealing with electricity they should wear the e class helmet and then c class is designed for comfort or for limited protection this bum cap most of the time we are going to use when we are doing the maintenance activities for example you are going to perform some activities inside the machine so if might be possible when you stand up or you take out your head 
uh, you will get hit by the machine or any parts. So that's why you are using the class C uh, type of helmets. Then we have hearing protectors. Uh, hearing protectors are very much effective, but again, uh, the most effective is the air, air muff, and then we have air plugs and air canal. Uh, they can reduce the noise up to 30 decibel. Air muff and air ca uh, canal caps and air plug, they can reduce the noise up to 15 to 17 decibel. So always use the correct air plugs. How do you use the air plugs? How do you use the air plugs? Like that. What the question? How to use the air plugs? First what of all, we have to squeeze it. <laughs> then? Hygiene. Then we have to put uh, in our ears. Uh, First, uh, you should uh, put the, uh, what do you call it? Put the, uh, the rope in, uh, like cover it. What you can say? Uh, cover it. Uh, like you should put it on your neck first and then put the earmuffs, earplugs. See, for example, this is my earplug. Yeah. Right? It's here. Same as we wear a Bluetooth. Now, how do you use it? By the way, I also have earmuff available. Right? So don't think that I have only earplug. I also have earmuff. To use earplug, most of the time what you are going to do Making it, tightening uh, uh, it, tightening it. In Urdu, no. we call it bhatti bana rahe uski. Hai na? And then, like mm. a screwdriver. Jitna andar jaye, utna achha hai. Right? This is highly incorrect activity. Yes. You have two hands available. See? Make a space in your air rather than make it bhatti. And then put easily inside your air. And it will get fixed because it's made up of foam. According to the geometry of your ear, it will get grow. Don't worry about this thing. Right? Don't use this earplug like a screwdriver. It's a very sensitive thing. And when we make it squeeze, squeeze, we are going to deform the shape. And then it becomes almost useless. Yes. Correct? Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay, what are the some cases of foot injuries? We can see that when we are walking, when on the surface, if the surface is improper or there is a sharp edges or there are some uh, slip and trip hazards are, are there, then we can have the foot injuries. Uh, how to avoid the foot injuries? By using the safety shoes. Uh, by using the safety shoes, most of the time we have seen that if you are using the safety shoes, how to clean the safety shoes from inside? Using the uh, some powder. Using some powder, which yes, insect this... insect powder. No, no, no. Baking powder. <laughs> In pharmacy, powder. the pharmacy pharmacy they have powder. Uh, you can put it inside the shoes to not uh, smell it come or bacteria. Okay. It's come inside. It. Okay, I ginger powder. Yes, any other? For one. Did you clean your safety shoes? Yes, I clean my safety shoes, but uh, oh, I clean it for... Right. <laughs> you know, so paper, for example, file or something like that. <laughs> See, the best way... Because, to... because I am in office, I don't... Uh, uh, yes, not... it's okay. Yeah. The best way and the I most... I keep outside, way... sir, for sunlight. Very good. Who told this? My son. Son. Yes. The best way to make your safety shoes sanitized by putting them into the sunlight. But most of the time, wherever we are living in homes and in, in our rooms, uh, there is very less passage of sunlight uh, because of apartment system. So whenever you are working in a company during your lunch break or tea time or prayer time, try to remove your shoes and keep under the sunlight, it will be a very good sanitization, right? Otherwise, we cannot wash the safety shoes from inside. It becomes difficult. Or if there are any, some sort of powders are available, then it's okay. Hand protection, you will be using here hand gloves for 
uh, burns, bruises, abrasions, punctures, fractures, amputation. These are all possible with the hands. Uh, then we need to know about something about the safety harness. This is safety harness is a very important PPE when we are you working at height, when we are working at construction sites, when we are working on scaffoldings or planks. Uh, this uh, uh, safety harness, if uh, lifeline must be secure above the point of operation, wherever you are working, your lifeline should be available on above because if in case you are going to fall, it will make grip. Uh, similarly, lifeline must support 5,400 pounds of dead weight, which means around 250 kilo. Lifeline must be 3 by 4 inch for most of the operation. Land yard must be 1.5 inch, half inch, or, I mean, total half inch in nylon or equivalent. Land yard must not allow a fall of over 6 feet. This is our land yard. Here we cannot see the land yard. So this is land yard, the belt which is going to be connected with the lifeline. Right, land yard must not fall over six feet. Uh, land yard breaking strength must be 5,400 pounds. Hardware, this hardware, these are all hardware. Can you see here? This is called hardware. Sorry, these are all hardware, right? Yeah, the so belt buckles, the hard, exactly. Earrings. Hardware must be drop, forge, or press steel or cadmium plated. The most uh, common or the most uh, good quality is considered as cadmium plated uh, which which will not allow rust to have the rust um, as early as possible hardware says surfaces must be smooth and free from sharp edges as required by saudi law uh, we need to have a six monthly inspection of lifting accessories and annual inspection of lifting equipment or lifting devices so in osha osha requires you to make the inspection by annual and it must be done by a competent person, right? Right, right. Any question? No. Okay, let's have a video. Oh, oh this video is very good video. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can see the... Uh, can you hear also? Yes.
How was the video? Yes. It was practical. Good. Somebody told me in one of the sessions, if you don't this, uh, teach this module, just show us this video, then we will get the witness. <laughs> See, PPEs are important. I don't say PPEs are not important. PPEs are important, but don't consider PPE as Wahid control. This is not the only control. There are other controls which we need to apply before the PPEs. It's right? just for defend, not... Uh... Any question? Shall we finish or continue? What is your level of tiredness? Too much. Too much. Okay. Let's take the off, not the break. And inshallah tomorrow six o'clock. Yes. Inshallah. Yes. yes. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. So tomorrow.